Welcome to the presentation entitled Experimental Validation of Detachable Links for Eccentrically Braced Frames. This is a work that was completed by Mehmet Bakır Boskur and myself. The outline of the presentation is as follows. I'll first try to introduce the basics of the EBF system, the problem statement and the replaceable links. Then I'll try to introduce the research program undertaken at Middle East Technical University on replaceable links. And followed by that is the introduction of the detachable link concept and the associated experimental program. Eccentrically braced frames is a hybrid system between moment resisting frames and concentrically braced frames. Here, the braces are connected with an eccentricity to form a link within the beam member, where this link is the main source of ductility and the braces are the main source of stiffness. Under a major seismic event, the links are expected to yield and dissipate energy while columns, collector beams and braces are designed to remain essentially elastic. In terms of the problem statement and motivation, the Christchurch earthquake series of 2010 and 2011 in New Zealand showed that there were significant damages in EBF buildings. So we see some photos collected from the, the literature where fractures occur in, in an EBF link or there were fractures occurring, bucklings occurring in links and EBF systems. These EBFs were subsequently repaired by either using welded links based on a site template or using bolted and plated links so that these structures were being used. There are some replaceable link details developed in the literature. To name a few, there are bolted flush and plated replaceable links, bolted extended and plated replaceable links, web connected replaceable links, or bolted flange and web replaceable links. A research program has been completed at the Structural Mechanics Laboratory of Middle East Technical University. This is a research program that was funded by the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. The main idea behind this research project was to develop alternative details for replaceable shear links and develop details that enable erection tolerance and finally develop details that can be installed under residual drill conditions. This was a multi-phase research program conducted by Boskurt and Topkaya, where phase one concentrated on directly attached braces to the replaceable links and phase two considered gusseted brace attachments. The idea behind the development is to produce replaceable links, which would employ splice connections at the collector beams and braces. And there can be erection tolerances introduced in these splices where standard connection details can be employed. So this was the idea, and this was tested using a full scale test setup, which I'm going to indicate in a minute. The results of the first two phases show that this proposed link detail can provide acceptable performance and all the links satisfied the AISC's link rotation requirement of 0.08 radians of inelastic link rotation. To reduce labor cost and speed up the replacement process, and also to install the link under residual drift conditions, the third phase of the research program was undertaken. 
And the primary focus of today's talk will be on the third phase of this research program, where a detachable replaceable link concept was developed and six detachable links were tested for validation purposes. Now, this is the concept of the detachable link. So we start with a conventional replaceable link with, with, with splice plates in the collector beams and, and braces. And what we do is that we introduce a mid splice connection between, between these pieces one and two. When we look into the internal force diagram, theoretically, the bending moment is zero at the mid length of the link. So there is considerable amount of shear, but theoretically the bending moment is, is zero. So this connection can be designed for a very low value of flexural moments. The proposed system is well suited for replaceable links with direct or gusseted brace attachments or they can be used in bolted, extended, and plated links as well. And by introducing this connection, an offset is introduced, which will then enable erection under residual drift conditions. The type of connection employed at the mid-length can be various types. So we see some examples here running from A, B, C to D, where different types are used for piece one and piece two. So we could choose a design where piece two and piece one has slotted holes. One of them has slotted and the other one has standard holes. One has standard holes drilled at the fabrication shop. The other one has standard holes drilled on site or there could be a welded connection. The tests were done by making use of an experimental setup, which you see on this slide, which is a nearly full scale test setup with five meters of bay width and 2.7 meters of column height. The photo of the test setup is indicated here, where you see in white wash the, the specimen and all the other gray members are the, the parts of the test setup. The loading is applied by a servo controlled hydraulic jack of 1500 kilonewtons in capacity. LVDTs were used to monitor the in-plane and out-of-plane displacements at the ends of the lane. And they are also used to measure the interface slip at the mid length to be able to observe how much slip occurs in this connection detail. The parameters are as follows. In this experimental program, link lengths of 600 millimeters and 800 millimeters were used. There were different connection types like bolted connections with standard holes, bolted connections with slotted holes, bolted connections with side drilled holes or welded connection type. Link sizes of HEA 160 and 220 were adopted and HEA 160 is for proof of concept and HEA 220 is for more realistic loading conditions. There was one specimen tested under no residual drift and the others were tested under residual drift of either 0.5% or 0.7%. The properties of the specimens are indicated in this table where we have the link section, mostly 160 HEA or 220. The nominal and measured link length ratios are indicated here and the connection types are shown. Specimen number four was a welded specimen tested under 0.7% of residual drift. The technical drawings of the specimens are indicated here and also given in the paper as well. For specimen one, this was tested under no residual drift. 
specimens two, three, five, and six employed bolted details with a residual drift of 0.5%, and specimen four employed a welded detail with a residual drift of 0.7%. The end details of the specimens are indicated in the slide that we have used different connection types, depending on whether standard holes, slotted holes, or side drilled holes are used in the specimen. If we look into the results, all six specimens were capable of satisfying the AISC's inelastic rotation limit of 0 0.08 radius. The interface slip response of specimens are indicated in this slide, and we see maximum slips of about three millimeters for specimen number three, and all the other specimens experience slips less than that amount. The failure modes of specimens were twofold. For relatively longer lengths, flange fracture was responsible for the termination of the test whereas for shorter lengths, it was bad fracture. Now, in terms of conclusions, a total of six nearly full-scale experiments were conducted to validate potential use of proposed detachable links, which enable easy replaceability of EBF links under residual plane deformations. Link length ratios varying between 0.86 and 1.68, Residual frame drift ratios of 0.5% and 0.7%, and different types of end plate connection details were considered. According to the test results, the inelastic rotation capacity of all specimens was kept about 0.08 radians, which is required by the AISC 341 specification. The test results demonstrated the potential of the proposed details and provided validation for the detachable links. Thank you all for your attention. This is the end of my presentation.